Hey everyone, just wanted to do a quick video on how to own a rocket launcher as a private person. What people think of when they hear rocket launcher is commonly spired or spent tubes that used to be rocket launchers that are now just paperweights. What we're talking about are functional rocket launchers that are regulated under the NFA. The National Firearms Act is a law that was passed in the 1930s and later updated in the 1960s and 80s that regulates certain type of firearms. For our video, we're mainly going to be covering destructive devices, which was added in the 1960s. And what those devices are, are typically firearms with a bore over half an inch in diameter. Basically, if the barrel is over 50 caliber, then it is considered a destructive device unless it has a exemption given to it typically that'll be the sporting exemption such as the 12 gauge shotgun has a bore over half an inch but is not regulated like typical rocket launchers so to obtain an nfa item on the federal level because many states have their own laws such as California, which banned the ownership of destructive devices. And destructive devices also include grenades, mines, and other explosive devices. But for this, we're mainly just talking about the firearm category of destructive devices. So there are two main categories in order to own a rocket launcher. You can either make one yourself using whatever tools you have available, or you can buy one from a dealer. To buy one from a dealer, you're going to fill out a Form 4 with the ATF. If you're going to make one, you're going to file a Form 1 with the ATF. There is not much difference between the two forms. Other than the Form 4, you'll be working with your dealer with the paperwork. With the Form 1, you're doing it all yourself. For both paperwork, you're going to submit a $200 tax stamp with a packet that you're going to fill out which has your name, information, your local law enforcement information as well as the firearm manufacturer name, the serial number, the caliber size, the barrel length, and the firearm length along with a little other information. Along with that packet you'll submit two small passport size photos of yourself along with two completed fingerprint cards and once you submit that, either through the mail or electronically, you'll wait back to get approval as soon as you've been approved by the ATF, which can take anywhere from a couple months on a Form 1 to, to a whole year on a Form 4. Once you have that approved, the dealer can now transfer it to you, or if you're doing a Form 1, you can now legally manufacture your launcher. Transferable destructive devices are fairly rare. Uh, the most common is usually the M203 40mm grenade launcher. Those appear to be the most commonly manufactured. You can typically buy other launchers, but on the second-hand market, they're very expensive depending if you're buying a large uh, artillery piece or bazooka or something like that. Things like the RPG-7 and other bazookas are typically harder to find. They are available, but you'll be paying a premium when you do find them. Uh, some companies are reactivating RPG-2s and RPG-7s, and those are becoming a, more available as time goes on. But most destructive devices are historical items that people typically don't fire. Some larger guns folks do fire, like artillery pieces and other large anti-tank weapons can be bought and fired. There is a big shoot called the Big Sandy Shoot in Arizona, where a lot of these collectors will typically fire their large bore firearms. However, in recent years, a lot of home manufactured launchers have made their way into the community, especially with the increase in technology with additive manufacturing. You can now use 3D printing to assist in the build of a rocket launcher or a recoilless launcher. We at Wild Arms Research have spent a lot of time working on this type of category of firearm. The next thing to consider is the ammunition. Typically ammunition is not available outside of 40mm rounds. 
which have to be assembled on the shooting location due to explosive laws, but those seem to be the most common. Typically, if you want to be able to shoot your destructive device or rocket launcher, you're going to have to make it almost entirely yourself. The rules regarding the ammunition break down in two categories. One, they cannot have more than a quarter ounce of explosive payload inside the warhead or projectile without being registered with the ATF. The second category, whether ammunition is a destructive device or not, is if a rocket has more than four ounces of propellant. Now, there is a little debate among what this truly entails. However, based on our legal experts' opinions that we've hired and attorneys that we've contacted and the ATF agents that we've reached out to, that as long as the warhead itself does not have an explosive payload, then the four ounce limit does not affect those rockets. If you have any amount of explosive or incendiary material in the warhead, then that four ounce limit therefore applies. This is not legal advice. However, in regards to storing ammunition, it's best to leave everything disassembled until you're at your firing location and then load everything up and fire it and do not transport or take any loaded ammunition home. Typically, to store ammunition, even for destructive devices, which no longer have the small arms exemption, will require a federal explosives license or an explosive magazine. There is another category of devices that are not subject to NFA regulations, which is signaling devices or safety devices. And those are typically 37 millimeter flare launchers or other launching devices that are not intended to be used as a weapon if you end up using these devices as a weapon, then they now become a destructive device, even though they were originally sold as a signaling device. So you have to be really careful not to use any anti-personnel ammunition. And that includes less lethal ammunition, like rubber buckshot and other baton rounds, as this will turn your signaling device into a destructive device. I hope you enjoyed our little overview on what it takes to own a rocket launcher in the United States federally. State laws will often vary, so be careful, and also your local laws will also have an effect. We appreciate you watching. We make historical launchers and we write books on them, and if you want to support our channel, be sure to check out our videos and maybe pick up a copy of one of our books, either the Fliegerfaust, the M202 Flash, or the Panzerfaust books that are available at the Commando Store and Amazon. Thank you and have a great day.